dissociative disorder so far we have completed the conversion disorder which is part of the somatoform disorders predominantly the the pain disorder conversion disorder the hypochondria is coming on to dissociative disorders dissociative disorder is nothing but where our conscious self becomes totally split from the reality and our personality disintegrates we are away from our memories thoughts and other things which are in mind so what are the common symptoms that occur in dissociative hysteria the first thing is loss of memory amnesia as we said under dissociative disorder three important criteria dissociative amnesia dissociative identity disorder and depersonalization derealization disorder so here in dissociative amnesia there is loss of part or whole of the memory what does that mean uh, the person loses a specific context let's say i remember everything about my past but just one specific person i don't have any memory about so that is a loss of part or the whole of the past memory related to a certain phenomena sometimes you just deny that is depersonalization you don't want to accept that part of your life and that's what is denial of reality the next is dream like state where your person goes into a state of fantasy uh, and that is intense levels of fantasy uh, multiple personalities under dissociative identity disorder which is also called as split personality there can be also signs of confusions uh, delusions or headache which can be witnessed so that's some of the common symptoms which pertain to dissociative hysteria as we said dissociative hysteria is relatively serious in contrast to the conversion conversion hysteria now dissociative hysteria how it can be treated by adjustments in life that's the first thing that you need to understand it can be cured well by learning a person can be made to learn and this problem can be cured sometimes suggesting them to eliminate certain symptoms from the past use of drugs or medications hypnosis as another criteria and free association are some of the ways through which we actually treat the problem of dissociative hysteria now <clears throat> there as we said in dissociative disorders uh, split personalities are there or you segregate yourself into more than uh, two distinct personalities and therefore uh, sometimes let's say Uh, you know two languages so in one form of personality you would speak only one language in the other form of personality you might be bilingual or you could speak another language that you know also the one person who is speaking one language would not know that he behaved in that way uh probably in the other phase of the personality it can also be a case that let's say you are bilingual you know um english and one other regional language so when you are speaking english you could probably behave like a a, a english man a britisher uh, have that accent and have that way of uh, lifestyle and that part is totally untouched with the other part of you which is probably a normal uh, people who is bilingual and others who speak english so that is how we understand the dissociative hysteria now what are the reasons for dissociative hysteria as we said for conversive hysteria the reasons were regarding conflicts uh, it could be regarding any unfulfilled uh, commitments of life here the major cause again is a disintegrated or a weak ego uh, sometimes there are uncontrolled fantasies which occur during the childhood a prolonged distress unsatisfied desires sometimes there are no clear sharp boundaries between the preconscious mind and the unconscious mind and adult actually face the problems in childish manner and if that is the case dissociative hysteria could be one of the causes for the same now what are the similarities so far we have done two types dissociative hysteria and conversive hysteria what are the similarities between the two the first similarity is in both the cases the person suffers from mental conflict there is some mental conflict and because of which the person is behaving in a not normal way of life the next is the repressed desires some of the unfulfilled uh, life achievements which were left 
are the reasons the next is both are means of defense mechanism you just want to quit away from certain situation and therefore you behave in a certain way and both of them are because there is a infantile behavior there is lack of maturity a childish behavior the person won't understand the consequences to oneself consequences to the family but just behave because a, what a child does a child just behaves and does not know the consequences of it similarly here again the person suffers from an infantile behavior the person would not understand that i would be given unnecessary medications unnecessary treatments which are not good for me which are not good for my family well being but just being a childish feeling the person would continue to do so so those are the similarities so four common similarities between conversive hysteria and uh, dissociative hysteria now coming on to the differences differences the most important differences dissociative hysteria is more serious form as compared to conversive hysteria here the patient is not conscious for a given part of their life because the person believes the other part is doing it and the other part is not not known by the first part so the first there, there is a split personality so this person does not know what this person is doing and the, the other person does not know what this person is doing so the person is not conscious of the act and therefore it is serious conversive hysteria is relatively less serious and uh, as we mentioned their organic uh, uh, symptoms are seen without organic reasons without pathological findings pathological symptoms are seen so that's the main difference there